Hey, hey, everybody. How are you? Welcome into After the Game with Todd Leary, of course. Indiana beats Nebraska tonight. We're getting everything ready to go. Hope everyone's having a great night tonight. How's Todd Leary doing? It's a road win. How can you not be doing great? Tom, Alan, how are you guys? Appreciate you. We're Let's know if you can't hear. What's that? So let us know if you can not hear. All kinds of new names on here tonight. Glenn Rainey. Down in Tallahassee. Hope you guys are having a, a good, enjoyable uh, week. Way to cap it off with a win by the Hoosiers. I wish I could get this shared a lot quicker so I could just we could just get to it. It'll only take a second. Yeah, I know. It's not my favorite part. Get her out there, boys. Pretty good go up ball game for Indiana. About any, two thirds any of road it. win. Any about, road win. Oh, absolutely. How about many have there been now? How many have there been now? Seven, seven total road wins. Very few. The Big Ten. Very few. I don't think there was any today. Hey, Cindy Lamb Knopp, how are y'all? How are you doing? Pete Clawson. Give us just a minute. Let's get that We're about there, folks. Out here. We're about there. Getting everything taken care of. Yep. Get your questions in. You can also hit us on the text line, 812-269-6367. Hit us questions. Or you can just right here on Facebook Live, of course, uh, and we can pop them out there. Um, oh, yeah, there was one more. Almost there, man. Boom. We're on. All right. Hello, everybody. How are you? Appreciate you joining us. Welcome to After the Game with Todd Leary. Live from Yogi's, Indiana beats Nebraska tonight. Brought to you by Best Beer of Bloomington, of course. Whenever you're around Bloomington, have yourself an ice cold Bud Light. Or Budweiser or McAltu or whatever your Corona. preference is in that regard. Todd Leary, former Indiana basketball player. I'm Jim Coyle with Indiana Sports Beat, of course. Thanks a lot for all you guys joining us. A lot of people on here already. Get your questions and comments in. A good game by Indiana. A road win, like you said. Most important. Big, very important. But number two, they beginning is a little sluggish, but then they did what they needed to do. They hit shots. Man, did they hit shots. We'll talk about that. They worked inside. They dominated Nebraska on the inside uh, about two-thirds of the game. Then they got up and they got a little fat and sassy. They got a little happy with themselves and started taking some bad shots. But overall, a, a great win, a good game, a great performance by Trey Jackson Davis again. Uh, wow, yep. what a performance for him, I guess. Where would you like to start? A lot of great places. Yeah, I mean, uh, being down 10, uh, eight minutes into the game, and when you had to make shots at that point in time, that's when that's when they knocked down the shots that were important. Uh, they, they finished the game still only shooting 31% from the three-point line on 8 of 26, but they were 6 of 16 in that first half, and the majority of those were made in that run of coming back from being down 10 to establishing that. I think it got up to a, an eight-point lead at one point in the first half. So, um, you know, just a really good job of guys stepping up and making shots. Now, there's still a lot of things for them to work on shooting-wise. I mean, some some of the same guys you saw make shots also shot some air balls. Um, so, but but I love the fact that they stepped up and 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 did knock some shots down. Doing it on the road has got to give them some confidence. I think we can't expect them to go from you know all really struggling to all of a sudden you know everybody's shooting really well. I mean, they're gonna there's gonna be a learning curve there, and and they showed the confidence tonight to come out. Shoot them, shoot the shots when they were open. I loved the fact we weren't waiting until the end of the shot clock. I loved it when we were making some of those shots in the first half. They were shooting them early. Much better shots, much easier to get offensive rebounds. Um, Trace Jackson Davis looked like a different player tonight. He looked like he wanted to be more involved and wanted to be more uh, – he was all over the court. I he mean, was he just, working for shots. He was. I mean, he was six for seven from the field, six of eight from the free throw line. I mean, that's, that's a healthy night. Thirteen rebounds. That, is that his, no, that's his second double-double in Big Ten play? Well, so. it's the entire front line, too. Joey Brunk, J Justin they, Smith they, even. 
I mean, Justin Smith was, was 7 of 12. Uh, Joey Brunk, 7 of 8. They destroyed Nebraska, as they should, because we've talked about this with the lineup situation. But they destroyed it and rebounded. Well, those three guys were 20 of 27 from the field. That's a, <laughs> that's you're not going to lose many games. You're not going to lose many games like that. And the game. rebound. You see the rebounding yeah. stats? Oh, they it's outrageous. They just destroyed. Outrageous. But Nebraska, they, Indiana, did what they have patented to do. Is they go through this lull where they get fat and sassy or whatever. I think there was a lot of turnovers during that period. There was, yeah. Because they did a, a good job with turnovers on the night. But during that one period, they had like nine turnovers in six minutes. It was a bad period. And they let Nebraska back in this game. Yep. They, they held on to win, of course. But uh, it's a, a little closer than it probably it, should have been. No doubt. And, and there's still, that's, that's, you know, let's look at that as one of the positives. There's a lot of things still to clean up. And they're able to come away from here with a win. Um, you've got, I mean, you've got to feel good hey, about it. I, I just, I, I, they needed a road win. They needed a taste of what it's like to win on the road. This is the right game to have at this time. Um, you know, I would love to have flip-flopped it. I think maybe if they'd have played this game first and then gone to Rutgers, it might have been a little different scenario. But take it the way it is. Now they get to come back home with a little bit of momentum. They've got, obviously, a big game next Thursday with Michigan State. Oh, absolutely. Uh, you love Charleston, South Carolina, don't you? I sure do. Absolutely, Tom. Thank you for listening. We appreciate you. Uh, Eric Draven got kicked out of an Indiana discussion group tonight. (laughs) We won't kick you out, Eric. I promise you. Tim says, uh, Tim here. Hey, Jim and Todd, where did this IU team come from? Well, that's a good question, honestly. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, we've they seen, did, they we've didn't seen play great, though. They didn't no, play great. No, no, no. They played, they played the way we would probably expect them. I mean, you know, from the three-point line, uh, what is it from the three-point line? Al Durham was one of five. Justin Smith, one of three. Rob Finnessy, one of five. Armand Franklin, two of five. Devontae Green, one of four. I mean, Jerome Hunter was two of three. That's probably the one that stands out. But but nobody nobody lit it up. Nobody did anything they're not capable of. And that's the funny thing is, is how close this team is to being a, a pretty formidable team game in and game out if they can just hit a couple of shots yeah, here I and mean, there. So, so the guards made some big shots, and, and, and both of Jerome Hunter's threes that he makes, you know, I give him a tough time all the time about shooting because his percentage is so bad, but, but his shots were timely. They needed those when they went down. But, but you look at them overall, I mean, they did not shoot well from the three-point line still. I mean, we're still at 30%. We're, you're still in, in putting yourself in last place in the Big Ten from a three-point perspective. So there's still tons of things to clean up. Hey, they won. I'm not complaining about on the, it. On the road. I'm responding to the fact that someone's bringing up, hey, where's this team been? You know, this team is, this team has shown this capability the whole time. They just, for some reason, they go through big spells of not being able to score the basketball. And they even did a little bit tonight. But, but still, you've got to give them a ton of credit. When they went down 10, everyone could have hung their head. They could have all pouted. They could have all, you know, not fought to come back. Now, don't, let's knock you down 10 and you turn this into a 25-point win. But you got to give credit where credit is due, and, and they did a good job at, at coming back from being down 10 because I wasn't feeling great about it at that point. Re- Rebecca says road wins ought to count for two. Yeah. Uh, you're not lying. Yeah. You're, you're not lying. You the other, is... There's four games in the Big Ten today, and that's obviously the only road win. I mean, Allen they're... points out that it was the only road win in the Big Ten today. Yep, no doubt. It was. Keep Green on the bench. I noticed yeah, Al why Durham. Why are people so dumb right. on Devontae? I noticed Al Durham didn't play a lot of minutes. Yeah, I mean, Al, it played the second half particularly. Yeah. You know, it was. It I don't was, know why. It was a situation in the second half. I, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, and I didn't catch it right when it happened, so I might be wrong on this, but I think Armand started for Al in the second half. Um, and I don't know if that had to do with some defensive issues. I'm not really sure what, what the deal was with Al. Al, Al had a quick. Uh, rope on him. He got taken to the sideline pretty quickly in the first half. I think that we're going to see that maybe not the rest of the season, but at least for these few games, to send yeah. a message. He's Archie seems like he's trying to and send a message. And if that's the message, that's fine. Because I think Al will be a huge part. I mean, I said that you know a couple of weeks ago when he was almost non-existent in some of the games. I thought Al was going to be a big reason why the team was able to turn it around, and I still believe that. Um, I, I just think that this is uh, there, there were so many I, I keep going back to this a, a few a few games ago when we talked about it in Arkansas and we talked about it in Mar- at the Maryland game specifically that Saturday afternoon. I remember sitting here thinking there was not one single guy we can name that we thought played well. Like 
even try to pick a player of the game was a joke. We couldn't even name anyone we thought played well. Yeah. And man, you could go down the list tonight. Tonight we could be All easy three to pick big a, guys. Tonight it was easy to pick a player of the game, but there was multiple all guys. three big guys you could sit there and, oh, and say were they, a gigantic factor and they and, were all an impact they really were justin smith i thought i mean he made a three take that out of the account i mean the, he was active all over the place he came up with some huge baskets he continued taking the ball to the basket like he's been doing so successful the last two games so if they can you know it seems like whenever indiana play has a guy that plays well then the next game he doesn't play well but somebody else might pick it up and he plays well Justin Smith, three games in a row, I think, has played pretty darn good. Joey Brunt, three games in a row, has played pretty good. Now you add Trace Jackson Davis to that. They're and, continuing to add and, guys to that. And piece. Justin Smith is playing within the yeah, game within that he himself. is best he is. at. He is. And that is crucial for this team. And it's crucial for them getting better. I mean, this is a road win. Uh, yeah, it's Nebraska. Yeah, they're one of the bottom teams at the bottom. It doesn't matter. You've seen what they can do. You've seen them beat a yep. Purdue team who turn around and just hell, and On just that court. On State. that court. They just so, played. Yep. Yeah, it, it doesn't matter where you are. And and Indiana handled this team. I don't like the fact that they let them back in the game. They didn't just let them back in the game. They let them in deeply into that game. But uh, that's something you can work on getting past and all that. But uh, a huge road win, that's got to be big just for their confidence as they move forward, knowing that they can win on the road and what it takes to win on the road. Yeah, I mean, no question about it. it uh, th- that That's a weird thing to say. Knowing what it takes to win on the road, it, you know, it seems like that would be pretty obvious, uh, but it's really not. Just getting a taste of it, having the experience of winning on the road, because here, here's something you got to factor into it tonight. So, so in the Big Ten, now they were able to do that. At, this at UConn, but in the Big Ten, this is the first time they're going to go into someone else's arena and turn around and fly home and have that feeling that you have when you're on the flight, because it's totally different. Win and loss is totally different. It's dead silent. The whole time you're on the bus, the whole time you're on the plane, the whole way back to Assembly Hall, the whole time the coaches come over and talk to you, all the way to the walk out to your car. It's totally silent. Nobody's talking. When it's a win, I mean, they'll be they'll be laughing and, you know, playing games with each other on their fo- phones and stuff. Like, there will be a totally different atmosphere. And I'm telling you, if you can get that to kind of be contagious and, and get a taste of that and all of a sudden you want to continue that, it makes a difference. Just in, I'm not saying, oh, oh, all of a sudden now they're gonna, you know, they're gonna want to win because the trip's right. over easier. But it's just gonna be a different feel, and they're gonna have a little bit different, you know, swagger about themselves. And, and when they go on the road in the next game, um, I can't remember what the next game is on the road. I know they've got two in a row at home, but I'm spacing what that next game is. But I'll look it up. But as far as three point shooting, they were doing really well in the night. We talked about <laughs> six of sixteen to start the game out. Six of six to start the game. Now, they ended up eight of 26. Yeah. So and they, they, was, they ended right and, back there at 31% again. And part of that was because during that lull, they were taking shots they didn't need to be taking. Some unnecessary three-point shots got taken, and that kind of made that worse. But the three-point shooting in that stretch lit the fire it that did. got this team it going. Did. It got them back when they were down 10 when they started making those. And so that got them to the point where they're back in it, they're coming back. And, and even once they got back to even and took the lead, they still made a couple more at that point. That's when Hunter made a shot or two here and there. And it was just those those were big. It was a big factor for them. Well, and when and when fans see that, I know that they, they get excited about thinking about next year when you got people like Anthony Leo, Trey Galloway coming on, shoot people that they see as shooters because it's <laughs> – Boy, it doesn't take much. It's like lighting a, a wick on a, it, it a dynamite is. stick. Well, we've how many games have we had where we've not been able to say Indiana made, you know, six or three pointers like they made in the last game, or eight three pointers like they made in this game? Everybody's just been sitting here saying, "Oh my gosh, when are we going to get Anthony Leal? And when are we going to get Trey Galloway? Like these guys have got to uh, have got to come in here and help us shoot the ball because this team is just not able to rely on making three point baskets, but." When you can make eight, okay, and, and I know the percentage is not great, but through the meat and potatoes of the game, six of 16 at halftime, I'll take that. That That is, you can live with that. 16 is probably too many. 26 overall is too many. But they had to have them. They were in a position where they had to have them. And we'll tell you this, what what the, the recipe that Nebraska had to win against Purdue was pack the lane in. Don't let Travion Williams beat you. Pack the lane in and make him beat you from the outside, which is exactly what the recipe was going to be again for tonight. And Indiana hasn't proven they can do that. 
Thankfully, they made six three-pointers in the first half, and you almost have to abandon ship at that point and play regular defense. Hey, you're listening to After the Game with Todd Leary. We're coming to you live from Yogi's, of course, here in Bloomington, brought to you by Best Beer of Bloomington. Have yourself a nice ice cold Budweiser, Bud Light, or uh, Mick Ultra, or whatever you prefer when you're in Bloomington or in around. We appreciate uh, the Finney Hospitality Group. But uh, a big win for Indiana, and a lot of people have asked. Some people said they're not concerned about it. A lot of people are asking, are you concerned? This scoring drought. It's been going on consistently now for game after game after game. You're not concerned about it. You got a problem. Yeah, I mean, that, I, I, but I think, you know, we're more, we're more cognizant of it with Indiana because we focus on Indiana and the stats and the droughts. But, but it's happening all across the country. I mean, teams are struggling to score the basketball. I mean, just, just look at the shooting <laughs> percentages people are having across the country. I mean, it's way, way down. So it's not just Indiana. But – that doesn't mean you have to live with it. There's still different different ways Indiana can get themselves some points on the board, and whether it's getting to the free throw line or whatever it might be, there are other ways for them to score the basketball. And, and Trace Jackson Davis was monumental in this game tonight. Like, like this is good for him in so many different ways in that he's kind of been struggling in the Big Ten. He had a big game against these guys here at Assembly Hall, so it's nice for him to be able to go on the road and do the same thing. So... Overall, you look at you look at Trace Jackson Davis as being a guy who inserted himself into, you know, back into being the best player on the team for Indiana because he had had a couple of games where I think he's just really struggled. Yeah, and and him having confidence is probably is more important than any other player on this team. Uh, being a freshman, but he's the guy that everything seems to run through, and we've seen that this offense is going to run through them once they can get this it, it, down to a. a, a a consistent basis where they've not been able to do thus far. Yeah. But confidence all the way around for this team tonight, shooting the ball, getting the ball inside. They did all the things they need to do defensively. They did a good job for most, for the most part defensively. Yeah, I mean, this, this came down to, and I kept saying it every time down the court, is every time it seemed like Nebraska was able to drive the ball into the lane, something bad happened for Indiana. Whether it was a basket or a foul or a basket and a foul or a kick out for an open three-pointer, like it really seemed like Indiana needed to take the same approach that I told you Nebraska was taking coming into the game and just keep them out of the lane. If they beat you from the outside, they beat you. I don't think Nebraska is ever going to be described as a team that uh, will kill you from the three-point line. And every time, and these guards are good, trust me. Cheatham is really good. Uh, Mac is just, he's probably one of the fastest guys in all of college basketball with the ball in his hands. It's difficult to keep him out of the lane, but if that's your focus and that's what you're trying to accomplish, uh, Indiana defensively was so much better when they kept Nebraska outside the lane. Once that ball got there, they struggled. Nebraska was able to get to the free throw line more than Indiana tonight, which uh, road games, not totally surprising, but uh, Indiana didn't shoot as well as they should have again either, so n- another thing that kind of stuck out of its head a little bit. Yeah, I mean, free throws, Indiana didn't shoot that well at all. What were they, 60% from the free throw line? But, but Indiana, <laughs> think about this, Indiana shot 67% from two-point range and 60% from the free throw line. I mean, I'll, I'll take 60, 66% or 67% for Indiana on two-point field goals throughout the game. I'll, I'll take that every game from it. Absolutely. Dr. J joins us. If you're, uh-huh. if you're in Southern Indiana, Sellersburg, Reynolds Family Dentistry is where you need to be going. We appreciate Reynolds Family Dentistry. We're here at Yogi's in Bloomington uh, coming to you live after Indiana beats Nebraska tonight. A big road win for the Hoosiers because uh, the road wins have been difficult. We saw it play in the Big Ten today. Uh, there were other games that, that were going on. This conference, I mean, we, you talked about you, you think that the winner is going to end up with four or five losses, and I thought that too. I don't think so now. I, I think Michigan State is going to somehow be that team that manages to get through that without you that. So? But we'll see. That's just yeah. – we'll see. That's, yeah. Well, I'll tell, you, I'll tell you a big factor in whether that will be the case or not will be next Thursday night because if, if they come in here to Assembly Hall and Indiana can beat them, and give them their second loss already in the early part of the Big Ten, I think that would be a big deal for for where it, where they end up. I mean, that the game Thursday night, I mean, you look, you analyze it, you look at it right now, the game Thursday night is for first place in the Big Ten. I mean, Indiana becomes tied for the, for the Big Ten lead if they can win that game. I mean, they're sitting in third right now, I think, right? Tied yeah. for third? Did not think that. But it's, but it's tied for third because someone else has an extra win. It's not because... Like Indiana has, yeah, hang on. 
Yeah, yeah. Illinois is five and two, and they're by themselves in second place. And Indiana is four and three. So, yeah. I mean, Rutgers still sits there at four and two. They're up there percentage-wise. They're still up there. But, but you know, if Indiana, if Indiana can win this game, they're going to put themselves right there. You know, in in second place, they can hang around that area. Here, here's the four-game stretch coming up for Indiana. You got Michigan State coming to Assembly Hall. You got Maryland coming to Assembly Hall. Then you go on the road to Penn State, and you go on the road to Ohio State. It's a big four-game stretch right here. I mean, I think I'm, what would as I, I I never I hate accepting losses, but I take two and two in this road trip in this in this next four-game stretch right now. Would you? Always. <laughs> <laughs> I mean. So, so that means you you probably need to win these two home games. I mean, you probably need to beat Michigan State and you need to beat Maryland. Ron in Arizona is listening and says, really solid minutes by Deron Davis on both ends of the floor. Jerome Hunter's defense at the end of the game was really good. Two things we haven't heard this season, both of those. Hey, hey, here's what, like, if I can say this without sounding derogatory, I, I hope it comes out that way. But that's a good. That's, or not. A, that's a good six minutes. That's a good six minutes out of Duran. That's all I want. Yes. I don't want seven. I don't want twelve. But but I'll take those six. He made two gigantic shots. And if you can get that every game, yeah. my God, what a difference that would make for this team. Yeah. He, he got he got four points and three rebounds in six minutes. That is the biggest that, production he's had all season. So hang on a minute. Here's the crazy part. If we have to add him to the big guys that we talked about that I already said were 20 for 26 from the field, that makes them 22 for 28 from the field. You ain't beating anybody like that. That's that's pretty crazy. We're not losing anybody at least. Yeah, that's pretty nice. But, uh, yeah, now Indiana has to move forward. Yeah. They've got to use this. They've got to take this forward and, and do this consistently. And they're still, but, it, but here's the thing. So and they get to come home. There's still a lot of things to improve on. Okay. Shooting wise, we didn't we didn't go there. It wasn't a fluke. We didn't go there and make you know 13 of 20 three pointers. They still shot 31 percent from the three point line. They only shot 60 percent. They only made 12 free throws in the game. So that that's not a crazy number. Everything they did, they can still improve on. And, and yes, you're right. You get to come back home and play. You know, I, I don't think anyone would argue right now the best team in the league. And you get them on your home court at the right time. In my opinion, this is the right time for this game for Indiana. I agree. They've got a ton of confidence right now and coming back home on top of that. Terry wants to know, why is Duran seeing so little playing time, especially now that we're in the Big Ten season? Well, that's. I'll let you answer that. Well, I mean, he's, first of all, Duran can't play more than, I'll say, I want to say three minutes in a row, getting up and down the court. He can't. He cannot play at this pace and at this speed. Not at the pace that Archie wants them to play. He he just can't. And and Indiana, if they have to slow it down to let him catch up, that's not their game. That's not their game either. They're not. That's not where they're at their best. So, Duran is in a tough position. Trust me. If you can get two, if you can get a three-minute stretch out of Duran in each half, we'll take it. That that is that is as much as I think we can possibly ask for out of him. If he's got to play more than that, he's going to be too tired. Dr. J said shots dropped when we needed it. And even when the scoring dropped, we were playing well enough to make it through. Yeah, they, That's right. they did tonight for sure. Look, you're, you're always going to – I mean, look, Duke gets beat at home tonight by Louisville. I mean, teams are losing all over the place. Duke is a really good, talented team, number three in the country, and they lose at home tonight. Um, teams are going to have these droughts. Like, you're going to have the scoring droughts. I don't like them. I don't like to live with them any more than anybody else does. But but you're going to have to live with some of that stuff. And like you said, Dr. J, they've just got to play well enough in those other times to make up for it. Rebecca said, if Nebraska's defense is such that we're forced to shoot threes, then we either need to be shooting more consistently or we need to work Well, I mean, Nebraska has a game plan. Look, they're playing with – they're scheming things for every game. They don't have a great roster. We all – we all would agree to that. I mean, they're they're they're, they're personnel challenges. They've, yeah, they've got a six six guy who's playing center, and and they've got two Cut of them, and, and that's it. So I mean, they are they're challenged, and they've got to scheme things weird. They've got to play a goofy defense, which is try to pack everything in. And look, they tried to pack it in, and Indiana's big guys still shot twenty two for twenty eight. That's that's incredible. It's scary. It's crazy. Scary with it. If anybody can do that consistently, they're going to be a dangerous team. Yeah, I mean, you got you got the play tonight from Joey Brunt, Trace Jackson Davis, and Justin Smith that if that's repeatable, if you can get anywhere close to what they played like tonight, 
Indiana finishes in the top three of the Big Ten and is a four seed in the NCAA tournament. Mark says this was a more complete game. Uh, they got everyone involved. And when Archie saw that Green didn't show up, he put him on the bench. You know, man, why is everybody tonight. so negative on Devontae? Look, what do we expect out of Devontae? Well, Devontae's a scorer. Devontae is going to have times. We need Devontae to be Devontae. We don't want him to try to be anything else. So when he comes in, I want him jacking shots up. I, the only thing that he can tone down a hair is some of the crazy passes and some of that goofy stuff that he does. But, I, you know, here, here's a rule to live by if you're Devontae Green. You can't turn it over if you shoot it. And I'll take him shooting from anywhere on the floor at any point in time. I really will. I, it, Look, that's what he's good at. Why do we want him to try to be something else? We know what we get when we've got Devontae. So so let's take that and live with it. There's a lot of teams that would love to have Devontae. He hasn't been that good of it lately. He's not been scoring that well. He's not been. Look at his confidence. He's not been level. hitting. He's not been. Totally. He's not been making his shots. He did not at all. Tonight he made a huge one. He made a huge three-pointer tonight. What did he shoot for the night? One for six. He's one for four from three. That one he made was a big one. They needed that. It was a kick out from the inside. The other ones, I feel like he's trying to force them. He's trying to get himself involved in the offense versus what do you hear when you're growing up, let the game come to you and all that. That's not Devontae. Devontae is a guy that forces it, and when he makes those shots, everybody loves it. Yeah, the, the passing is he, – he's gotten into this he's thing. He's gotten into that one-handed bounce He pass. even tried to do that along the baseline once, yeah. and it was like, well, dude, what are you doing? You can't, turn, you can't turn it over if you shoot it. It's a rule to live by as a scorer. Mark thinks Justin had one of his best games of the year. Three, he's had three in a row. Three good games in a row from Justin Smith. Uh, Matt says, I think against MSU, we will have to play three bigs like they did tonight at all times. Well, they've been doing that pretty much all year. I don't, I don't, I don't know that I agree with that. I mean, Michigan State's not an overly gigantic team. I mean, Tillman's a big guy. Uh, he's a big body. Um, you know, they play with um, – Oh, gosh. Uh, Henry Henry is on the floor. Henry's smaller than Justin Smith. He's way smaller than Justin Smith and not near as athletic. So, I mean, you, Indiana's lineup will be every bit as big, if not bigger, than Michigan State in this game. I mean, it, here, here's the difference. Here's the difference. Here's why Purdue beat Michigan State. It, not just as badly as they did, but here's why they beat them. It's because they, had, they made – Cassius Winston play his worst game maybe of his career, but for sure of the season. And if you can make things difficult on Cassius Winston, you can make them difficult on Michigan State. They're not a great scoring team. Cassius Winston gets them involved in their offense. When he starts making shots, I I swear I don't know why this is the case. It's just true. Coaches will tell you this. When he starts making shots, other guys make shots. I don't know why it's the case. When they were at Purdue, he was he couldn't make anything. He was shooting air balls. He was missing everything, and nobody could make a shot. He's definitely the motor. It's contagious, <laughs> and when he starts making them, I swear other guys make shots because of him. Uh, Vashon, listening in Dallas, Texas. Mm. Man, we got oh, guys I wish all it was over. as warm here as it was there. Jennifer, how are you? Uh, Twyla, how are you? We appreciate everybody. Twyla? Kelly says, uh, second half of the season, with so many road games concerning, they need to play like they did tonight. Well, yeah, they, they've got, I think, the second most difficult schedule in the country. Yeah, now. that's what I heard. I don't, I don't know. I, here, here's what's crazy about Indiana's schedule. If you listen to our daily show, you've heard me complain about this almost daily, is Indiana has this weird combination of they just finished two road games, and then they've got two home games, and then they've got two road games, and then they've got two home games. It just keeps alternating back and forth. That makes for some really long, difficult weeks. Indiana was able to kind of cut that in half this week and got a road win. Now they need to come home and get two big wins in Assembly Hall. Think about the momentum Indiana would be on going into Penn State if you come off of winning a road game and then beat Michigan State and Maryland and head to Penn State. You feel pretty darn good about yourself. Are they 14-4 and four now? Indiana? 14-4, 14-3. But Indiana 14, is that's just 14 point. and 4. The, the wins, they're piling up. And if they can keep that up, hey, Jeff. Jeff. it will continue. Uh, and they were nearly lost Oklahoma today. Uh, Purdue lost today. Kentucky almost lost Arkansas, a team that beat Indiana. Arkansas. She, she Coach Cal get, oh, he got booted. booted. He, I, you knew it was coming. He got, he I think he was trying to get booted. He and it worked. It, it did. You saw what the, they the went down ten. Though. They went down ten. Though, they after they he came got back booted. hard. Yeah, they did. came back hard. 
But uh, more importantly, Indiana gets a gigantic road win tonight. Jennifer says, looking forward to MSU on Thursday. The crowd factor will be big for that game. And that's another thing. A game like this, even though it's on the road, it's going to amplify that crowd. Oh, it was already going to be big, you know, having having Michigan State. You know, this is the only game with Michigan State this year. Indiana doesn't have to go there. So what a big factor this could come into play at the end of the year. If Indiana can get on a roll and be right there at the top of the Big Ten, this is a, this is a key game for them in winning this one. But the crowd... Look, you're not going to have to jack the crowd up for this game. I don't think there's any secret in this one. Like, Indiana's crowd is going to show up. It's a late game, so the students will have time to get looped up by the time the game starts. <laughs> uh, I mean, 8.30, 8.30 Eastern time start on Thursday night. The second game on Fox for the night, it'll be uh, it'll be rocking it. And the funny thing is, last year, Indiana sweeps Michigan oh. State. And Indiana, was that, that team last year was not very good at all. And Michigan State may have been better last year. I'm not sure. Uh, the Michigan State's last team last year was probably better than, than they are the this team year. team that went to the Final Four last year. Yeah, <laughs> Michigan State. Yeah, they went to the uh, Final Four last year. Um, but this Indiana team, I, I, I put yeah, I, I'm with you. Hey, no one can explain how they won at Michigan State or at home against Michigan State last year. It was, you know, it was one of those scenarios that they made plays at the right time. Thank you. And, you know, this is this is a great opportunity. I, I said it earlier, and I kind of mean it from this day. I'm not kind of. I really mean it. I think this game is at the right time for them. Had they lost this game here today, I would not think that. I would, I would, I would not say it was a good time. For them. A lot of talk about Devontae, and Dana says that she thinks he's a better spot-up shooter than he is off the dribble. No, I disagree. Devontae, to me, is a guy, he's a better step-back shooter. He doesn't make, although the one he made tonight, um, you're going to have to agree with you. He was spotted up. He didn't dribble. They threw, they kicked it out to him. He's a, he's a guy. He makes shots. His degree of difficulty on made shots, it, it probably leads the country. I mean, it's incredible some of the shots he makes. He is a he is a creative scorer. Look, you're not going to rein Devontae in. Let's not try to change him. Let's not try to make him something that he's not comfortable doing. We need him to make shots. Indiana needs him to be creative. There's going to be games we rely on him. There's going to be games he's our leading scorer by far. We've not thought he's played that well, in, and he's been our leading scorer in like two of the last four games, and we've not thought he's played that well. Let's take what we can from Devontae. Squeeze every ounce of juice out of his career. Dr. J's on that page. He said when Devontae has to run the point for us in prior years, his hands worked faster than his brain. He can shoot all he wants as far as I'm concerned. Good thing when you're working on people's teeth, your hands don't work faster than your brain, Doc. Eric says, I live by right by East Lansing, and I work with a lot of state fans, so this would be huge. Oh, is, that Ryan, Michigan? is that a Ryan? No, that's Eric. Oh, all right. We got more people in Michigan. All right. We got all kinds of. Uh, yeah, James says, I, I think Devontae already plays the team. Yeah, I mean, it, it, Indiana has. There's no one. There's no really there's no not. one. It, it, there's not. I mean, other than uh, Rob Tennessee, I think is. I mean, he is a. He's supposed ben, to be the point guard. Supposed to be the one. Other but, than that, none of them are really the. They, when they play, I, and I and I like it. Yeah, this offense does not have a point guard. You would you would probably say if you're going to number them, you would probably say when Devontae's in there with Rob that that Devontae's at the two. I don't like the lineup. That's Devontae, and then. Justin Smith, Trey Saxon Davis, whomever else big, and Joey Brown. Like I don't, I don't want that lineup. I don't want him to be my my guard out there. No. So James, I agree with you in saying that. We don't want him at that. But beyond that, as long as he's not that one guard that's out there, he's probably part of at least a two and a lot of times a three guard lineup that's out there. So whatever he plays in that, look, we want the ball in his hands and we want him to be creative. When he gets hot. We love him. So you got to live with him when he's, when he's not. And he's suffered through a couple of bad games. I mean, let's let, let's understand he's a shooter. They're going to do this. He's still leading the team in three-point shooting. The, the thing that this team seems to be missing to me is a slasher, a guy who just But that's gets. what Justin Smith's been for three games in a row. I agree with you completely. But what, what have we been begging him to do is drive that ball into the lane or catch it and explode to the basket. And you know who else I think should be doing that? Jerome Hunter. Agree with you. I mean, and I thought he, what I he's think built he for. tried to do that. Here, here's what we got. Here's what we got to hope. I think Jerome made strides in that the last two games. Tonight he drove one in. He backed his guy down and he kicked it back out. 
but he made two threes. So let's hope he doesn't. He's, he's a sophomore, but he's really a freshman. This is his first year of having it yeah, in court time. That was the worst time. thing that could have happened was him hitting that so him making, footer. So him making a couple of threes, let's just hope. Here, here's where you can say, you know, the coaches get to him or the older players get to him and get him to understand, hey, that's great. Keep shooting him, but keep driving. Keep slashing to the basket. Keep getting those shots inside the lane. Get you another game where you're five of six from the free throw line. Doug in Australia says we need six more wins to have more wins. To get the 20. Oh, he was talking about the 20. He's talking about the Getting closer to every game to shutting up the Archie haters. Well, a little about that. But. Yeah, I mean, you know, th- th- look, people are always going to we're, – we're, here, here's what we know. We're still going to have some games we struggle. We know that. And oh. we're going to be able to criticize the coaching or the players or the shooting or the passing or the free throw shooting or defense. We're, that's what we do. That's why we're at Yogi's at 9 o'clock at night on Saturday night. This is why we love it, okay? So let's just embrace this it. This is why you guys are here because you love it. You're <laughs> let's awesome. Embrace it and, and we love you. understand we're still going to have frustrating nights. we love you all. Thank you all. Think about this. Two Saturdays ago, we, it was after the Maryland game, and we were ready to bang our heads against this table. Last Saturday, they played great, and we're loving everything. And then, and then we know we've got a big road game coming up with Rutgers, and we didn't play well in that one. Wednesday night, we're banging our head on the table again. And Saturday, we're excited again. I mean, this is why we're nuts. This is why we're insane, but this is what we have to get used to and expect it. Here, here's what – Here's what. okay, so let's let's remember this, all right? What is it, the 18th? It's the 18th, I think-ish. We've got four games coming up, right, Jim? Four yep. games coming up. Two, two home games first, Michigan State and two Maryland. Away. And two away games at Penn State, at Ohio State. Would we all accept, fans, text in to me right now, would you accept two and two out of that? No. I know you'd accept three and one. Without yes. a doubt, you'd take three and one. No, no question we, we, about we it. Accept two and two? Yeah, accept it. But it's to me, it's mediocre. It's, it's, it's But if you had to pick it right now, if you had to say right now, if I don't have to play those four games and you give me two wins out of those, I'll take it. No. I don't. <laughs> I would. I probably yeah, I, would. I think you need to. I, I, need I to, probably would. I, need to, I, I want the three and the one. I'm with you. That's the challenge. We, look, I want look, the they three don't, and We one. don't get to get it, so it's not like it's really going to happen. So I can kind of sit here and say it. But but if you're looking at it right now and you're saying. But to hold serve, all they have to do is. If they win two. the two home games, think about it. Right now, if you and I wrote it down on paper, hey, Dana, what order they come in, if you and I wrote it down on paper, is that Dana White? Dana Shouldn't Jones. he be worrying about the, the, the <laughs> no. fight coming up? No, they, they, they've, got, they've got one going on right now. But, but, it, but right now, if I just asked you and I said, okay, at Penn State, is Indiana going to win? Probably, you're probably no. going to say no. At Ohio State, is Indiana going to win? I'm going to say no. Probably going to say no. So if you look at it that way, that's two of the next four games. Oh, no. I, so I, then I I'll take the two. Yeah, I, I if think If you two watch two. Ohio State right now, look, I'm, gonna, I'm going out in here, I'm saying – Three weeks ago, Ohio State was one of the best teams in the country. Internally, I I don't care if I'm stirring the pot right now or not, I'm telling you, internally, something's going on at Ohio State right now. Because they don't like each other. They don't play well. They don't share the ball. They're not shooting the ball well. They don't care if the Wessons are hot. And they're losing. And they're losing. And they don't don't like each other. You can see them go to the huddle. I saw uh, Chris Holtman is one of the – uh, kind of cool guys, kind of like a Jay Wright. You know, he's kind of just always you know, like Brad together. Stevens. He's the Brad Stevens. He's got it together. Always together. Got himself calm and under control. He, he threw a conniption fit earlier <laughs> today. I mean, a he called a time, he, fit. He called a timeout and went nuts. And that was the that was a sign to me. I saw when they suspended two guys. And they didn't really say what it was for. And then those two guys played again today, and they still lost. Something's going on there that we don't know what it is. And I don't care if I'm stirring the pot or not. I'm telling you, that's a game that Indiana has a chance of stealing. Right, because of what they got going on. Penn State, oh, my gosh, did they look good today. <laughs> That'll be – Indiana's going to have to shoot the ball really well to go there and win. Those got, They got older players playing, and they're mean, and they're aggressive. And, they and they're score, hungry. And, they, and they're, they're sick and tired of not making – they're sick and tired of being the doormat. I saw – what was the stat I saw today where – between them and who did they play today? They played Ohio State today, didn't they? Robert Carter, 14-4, that's right. I saw a stat today about Penn State and, and making it to the making it to the tournament and how many it's been like twice in the last 20 years or some ridiculous number. I mean, these kids 
are here to make the NCAA tournament and get themselves a decent seed Kurt so that Moldenhauer. they can win some games. That was Kurt. Uh, oh, it's a happy birthday to Dave, Dave Capel today, too. Uh, Mark says Justin Smith is the slasher and gets to the win. Last three games, him. he sure has Yeah, been. we'd like but, to see him get more often but as well. Let's take it. Well, last three it was, games, and we've been been begging for that for we a long time been. because we know he is such so given, an incredible athlete. And we've given him the credit. For three games in a row, we have witnessed it. Trust me, as soon as he... As soon as he had the first move three games ago where he slashed into the basket and caught it in one dribble and laid it in, I almost wanted to start the show right then because I wanted to give him credit right away. I didn't, want it to, I didn't want it to go without being noticed, but he continued it. He's done it for three games in a row now. I hope everybody's enjoying the night coming gotta, to yeah, it. Yeah, we got to hurry up and get off here a little bit. <laughs> we got some big UFC on. fight tonight. Conor McGregor and Cowboy. Cowboy, I know everybody's going to be getting to that, so we're not going to keep you guys much longer. John says, I still think the uh, 12, 15-footer is not used enough. Brunk makes Joey it more Brunk than anyone. Brunk used it tonight. Well, it's, we, we talked about that. We're on it one tonight. They're, they're getting they're, – they're, they're bringing it around a lot better. They're, they're starting – to they're try making, to get this offense. Some plays. They're making some plays. Pete Clausen says, well summarized, yes, is the expectation. That's my buddy from college, Pete. Mark says, we are nuts because we might be the most consistently inconsistent team <laughs> in the Big Ten. Bingo. <laughs> You're not lying. That is factual. John says, hell yeah, I'll take two and two. Uh, and Rob, yes, playing. Those teams next, I'd be okay with two and two. So you got a lot of people responding. But yeah, I mean, if you look at it that way, look. Indiana because you look at in the long run. Indiana fans are tournament. never are never satisfied with 500. Okay, I'm not I'm not satisfied with it either. But if you look at it at Penn State, I watched Penn State play today. This is the third game I've watched them play this year. They're good. They play hard defensively. They're they're nasty. Like they're good. That's going to be a very difficult game to win. Ohio State. A month ago, we would have all said. <laughs> Guaranteed loss at Ohio. They were they were number two in the country and killing everybody. Not anymore. But they're not that same team. That's a one, that's one you could steal. But knowing that, winning these first two games hey, gives Lisa. you an. Un, I'll tell you right now, if they win both these games, if they beat Michigan State, they're going to beat Maryland. Maryland's Maryland is terrible. Maryland sucks. I don't care what anybody says. They suck on the road. They suck. But if they can beat Michigan State, then they would beat Maryland. I really think they have a, a decent chance of going on a run. Going well, on a little bit someone of a run. just said that. I, I just went by it, but they talked about how important Rob playing those two teams next would be okay with uh, to. They said if they could win those two games and get on a roll. Yeah, exactly what it, you're it, talking I mean, about. You just never how know. huge it would be. Yeah, that. Uh, let's see. So that um, that Penn State game is going to be a weekday game. It's going to be during the week. So. That, that's a little bit better from the standpoint. It's easier to play a road game because the other crowds usually aren't as good. It's easier to play it during the week. On the weekends, it, it's a little bit more difficult because the crowd's able to get riled up. I also I shouldn't say that because I also feel the same way about Sunday games. The crowd's not quite as loud on Sundays as it is on Saturdays. And, you know, it, it's just a little bit different. Indiana's got, you know, that game this, this coming up week is on a Thursday, and then they play on a Sunday. And then that Penn State game is going to be during the week at Penn State. Might be a little bit of a chance to steal that one. Doug down in Australia says, what's one of you two gents sneaked into Coach Knight's house and stole two sweaters? (laughs) It wasn't me. Yeah, it wasn't me. (laughs) That was our wardrobe person. Uh, Yeah, it's just they're getting there. They're getting there. Okay. They're, they're hey, making guys, strides. And they're making strides getting better. Guys made plays tonight. Improvement is the thing. When you see improvement, people accept are more accepting of a lot of things. Uh, it's hard to accept a loss. But when you see improvement, you know that it's coming. Here's, and we see improvement. Here's some of the – okay, so here's, here's where the coaches can still get a little bit frustrated and have things to work on. Some of the same mistakes that were made at Rutgers earlier this week were made today. They made some of the same really bad plays. But today they made some really, really good plays. And against Rutgers, I don't think there was ever a stretch when we were like, oh, my gosh, they look really good. I can really tell that Justin Smith and Trace Jackson Davis and Joey Brooke are confident as heck that we're going to win this game. And, and you couldn't say that against Rutgers. They made some of the same bonehead plays in this game they did in that one. They just made some plays. They made no plays against Rutgers. 
You know, Mark says Penn State could honestly be the second best team in the Big they Ten. They could be, without question. They could be. Right, that's now, subject to right change. now, today, right now today, yes. I would say they're the second yes. best team. It's subject to change because two weeks ago that was today, his team. And today, I would say Illinois is the third best team in the Big Ten, and they almost lost at home to Northwestern. Today. Hey, man, I've been on Illinois all year long. You, you have been. I'm telling you, it's, it, this this league is just so it's funny. Nuts. It's it, The whole country is nuts. This, don't worry. If you're wrong this week, you're going to be right That's next right. week. Just, just keep wait. Just yes. stick with you. Don't <laughs> change. Don't change your position because if you do, you have a chance of changing it to the wrong one. Hey, we can't thank everybody enough. We appreciate you guys as always for joining us. We have people from all over the place, all over the world tonight. That was amazing. Uh, Australia. Oh man, Dave Pittsburgh. Martin. Dave Martin will be at the game Sunday. That's a big deal. Oh wow. Former president of the Varsity Club for Indiana. A guy did so much for Indiana. It's insane. Really excited to see him. I, I, I can't wait. I always like to go talk to him when he comes. To Cannot game. wait, Kelly. Uh, thank you so much yeah, for letting us know that. We appreciate. It. And thanks everybody. We appreciate your course. We're coming to you as always live from Yogi's here for after the game of Todd Leary, Indiana beats Nebraska tonight. What was the final score? I don't even know the final score. Eighty-two uh, seventy-four. Eighty-two seventy-four. But uh, blowout. It was fictional blowout. Lacking. But uh, we're back next Thursday for after the game, of course. Late, late, late. Yeah, late, late game. Uh, be a late It'll be early morning game. for you. And hey, that's right. Our people are there, though, man. They're on it. They're the 11 o'clock oh, game yeah, they're in. They, that's right. So Indiana takes on Michigan State in a huge game next week. See if it can continue. But we're back Monday, of course, uh, Monday morning, 9 o'clock, live for Indiana Sports Beat with Coyle Leary. So you can catch us then as well. But uh, a lot more, uh, just a lot of more games to get to, but it's getting better and getting more fun. Boy, it's a lot more fun when they knock some shots down, isn't it? Uh, it sure makes is. it makes it exciting. And, I, mean, I mean, just good play all around. Like there was a lot of good things to there was things to feel good about today. I mean, after the Rutgers game, you kind of wondered if there would be a little bit of a hangover from that, and there really wasn't. They came out and, and they got down by ten, but it was kind of shots being made by by Nebraska. I mean, you hope back into it, but man, keep they, hope alive. Yep, keep they, hope alive. They uh, they fought back. Well, thanks to everybody, as always. Thanks to Chris Martin, and thanks to uh, Nathan Finney and the entire Finney Hospitality Group, everybody here, uh, Starling, everybody that took good care of us here at Yogi's, as they always do. Jessica for uh, producing the night. Uh, just threw that in there. Yeah. <laughs> Throw a title on there. There you go. But uh, appreciate everybody, as always. Thanks a lot. Thanks to Todd. I'm Jim Coyle, and until then, I will see you on the radio.